I suppose those elite guys, they're used to sort of that team within a team vibe in those big factory teams when you're against guys that you're competing for, for wins and podiums. So it was interesting to see sort of Chase Sexton moving on to him. He was mentioning on that podcast with AC that, you know, it was a bit like that at HRC, the Lawrence brothers, obviously Jed especially had their sort of guys. He had his sort of guys and obviously he wasn't sort of, he said they got along fine with them, but it just wasn't the sort of framework that he was that sort of into by the end of it. So it's always going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Obviously he was really happy about KTM moving there. Obviously he said he knows a lot of guys there. They obviously do leave no stone unturned as well, their approach and probably be pretty cool having a teammate like AP for him to keep things light and fun as well. And he's obviously not going to be the every guy winning races. Obviously he's got the speed and the capability to win races, but should be a bit of a switch for him. And how do you think he plays out on that KTM? It's going to be just fascinating to see it unfold, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be interesting. And and I think that they're going to roll out a new factory edition KTM for him. Um, I, I think that's why there's not much out there in the way of social media, not much video, not many photos, because I, I think that he's spending most of his time riding the new model that will come out sometime in the next month. Um, and, and I think that was critical for him to end up signing that deal was that they were going to make some chassis adjustments on the new frame from all the complaining that the Husky guys and the KTM guys had had over the past 18 months. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do think he'll be great. I, I think that that new bike will be considerably better. They'll adjust and, and I'm sure they were hard at work trying to address the things that needed to be addressed. But once that chassis came out for the 2023 model, there wasn't much they could do, right? They were, they were stuck for quite a while. So I'm sure they really wanted to get this one right. And I'm sure Chase got to ride it several times to make his, you know, end all be all decision to sign that, that KTM contract. Uh, but he should be great. Um, he's, I mean, is a fantastic rider. Sometimes, you know, it, it can, a lot of it can be in your head. You know, it doesn't have to be a fundamental machine change or anything. It can just be, Hey, I need to be in a different place on a different bike around different people and get my mind right. Because from what I saw and, and I was pretty up close to it, he was really unhappy uh, at the end of last season. He just didn't want to be on that team anymore. Uh, I, I think he felt like that was now the Lawrence's team. And I don't, you know, I, I don't think you can blame Honda or blame Chase. You know, for Honda, you look at their future of these two brothers that are so captivating and have so much potential. And you couple that with the fact that myself, and I'm not, I'm not involved in these teams. I heard in the summer of 2022 that Chase Sexton had already either signed or was given a letter of intent by KTM for the 2024 season. So if you're Honda, how are you going to respond to that? You're going to be all in on Chase when you've got a whole year and a half left on a contract and you're already signing or attempting to sign with another team like that can't feel great either. You know, in the midst of trying to battle for that 450 pro motocross championship, that's when all that was going on. So I think there was a lot of, push pull there you know depending on which side of the fence you're on you likely had legitimate reasons to be a little miffed you know i i could make a case for either side feeling the way that they did but some things you know they come to an end for a reason ktm really needed chase sexton i think you know this was the perfect fit for chase for ktm to get him so that works really well and if you're chase you're like yeah i don't i don't want to be under the same truck with Jet and Hunter on 450. I just don't want to, I don't want to do that. Um, so sometimes things happen for a reason. Uh, it was interesting for me at the finale at Ironman and then going through the SMX races to kind of see what, like take the temperature of the room between Chase and Honda. And I, I truly felt like Honda, the Honda guys were really bummed uh, because you think about Sexton, he's been on a Honda his whole career. He is a Honda guy, amateurs, professional 1-250 titles for them, wins a, breaks the streak of Supercross titles going back 20 years, right? He broke the GOAT streak or the uh, the curse anyway. That means a lot, right? And, and I think they, you know, he, he was one of them. He was a Honda guy. And, and for it to end on a not really amicable basis, uh, I, I think left a scar. And I don't think they were, they felt great about it. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, it's a bummer. Things always end for a reason. And sometimes they don't, they don't have to end well, they just end, you know? And, um, but yeah, I, I do think it's for the best and the, because like the, the points I laid out, when you look at where Honda's trajectory is going, 
it feels like they're all in on this Jet Hunter brother thing. And then KTM really, really need a chase in their life because they need that guy that can win. So, yeah, it probably was for the best. It just You just hate to see really strong partnerships that are decades long uh, end on a, on a sour note. And I kind of – I think it did. 